All right, so it's time to go ahead and start doing some models. I have a bunch of these built up over the years, and I used to do them when I was a kid, but kind of gave up the hobby. But now I have them again, I should go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna start off with the F14. This is not a big one. This is a 144 scale by Academy. This thing is small, guys. It's a perfect little practice model for me to go ahead and get back into. As you can see, I went ahead and highlighted all the numbers, which I like to do. And yeah, look at the instructions, guys. Five steps, and we're done with this thing. I might even be able to get this done by tonight. Depends how quickly the paint dries. And yeah, not many parts at all. We got the glass, that's always fun. We got those stupid decals that require water. Of course, how to do all that stuff. And Han Shai Yang. <laughs> All right, guys, let's open this up. Okay. All right, this looks absolutely fun to take care of. Yeah, that was a good step. That's a good idea. Let's start off with really ridiculously small <laughs> pieces. All right. So. Let's see what we're gonna be working on first and go on from there. So, step one, we better get these wings out. Next up, we need that body. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay one wing in there followed by the other wing. And then while those wings are in place, we're gonna go ahead and glue this part onto the bottom. All right, so that was actually kind of tricky to slide all together, but yes, I got it together. Now we gotta wait four hours. Next up, I need to go ahead and put the cockpit together. So let's cut these out. All right, now all I've got to do is, well, glue them together. Now with pieces like this, well, I don't want to use a clamp because they are a bit difficult, so I always just use some masking tape. Masking tape has been my friend throughout many years when making models. Just got to pinch it really tight and then pull it across. This is when it becomes rather vital that you don't use too much glue. You use too much glue, then it's going to glue onto the tape and it's going to cause a whole bunch of issues when you try to take off the tape. So yes, try to get everything aligned just right. What you do. Bam. Okay, now we got to wait for this to dry. Okay. So, glue should be dry. Go ahead and peel this all off. All right, the nose looks good. Now, let's check the body. Okay, body looks good. Wings are kind of pathetic, but yeah. oh well. <laughs> now, we need to go ahead and glue the nose onto the body. Okay, so I have that taped off. Now it's time to go ahead and work on the fins. So let's go ahead and cut those out. And then after that, we need to move on to the engine. So we're gonna go ahead, take out the exhaust. All right, so next up, we need to go ahead and just put the fins in. And then you can see they don't really stand straight up. They tilt out to the side. I actually kind of like that look, though I'm sure that they want it to go straight up and down. Hmm, we're gonna have to figure this out. But I need to tape that just right and then glue it down. Okay, it seems like the glue is gonna hold it just enough where if I keep this level, the fins will stay straight. All right, fins are dry, looks pretty good. Let's pull off this tape and see how the cockpit fared. And it looks pretty good. All right, next up, I need to go ahead and glue these stupid little engines on. Okay, now we gotta let that dry. Next up, we need to go ahead and do the intake for the engine. So, let's go ahead and cut those out. Go 
Go ahead and do a little trimming to clean this up. All right, so this is pretty simple. They just get glued on just like that. All right, now we gotta let all that dry. Okay, everything turned out pretty good so far. It's coming together, cool. So next up I need to go ahead and work on the front wheel. And unfortunately, this is one of those models where <laughs> the panels for the front are one piece. So I need to cut that out. And then using an X-Acto knife, I have to cut this in half. All right, now that I cut it in half, I need to go ahead and glue these panels to the inside on each side. Okay, so we got the doors for the front landing gear. Now we need to do the doors for the back landing gear. And unfortunately, it's the same case as it is for the front. I have to cut these doors in half using the X-Acto knife. So I have to go ahead and cut it right there in half. So I got the rear doors in for the rear landing gears, and I'm not gonna lie, the design for this was pretty crappy, guys. <laughs> but I got that taken care of, so now we gotta do the landing gears themselves. So we have three of them. Let's go ahead and cut them out. All right, as you can see, it's pretty obvious where they go. I mean, just line them up with the holes and stick them in. Okay, with the landing gears taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry, and it's time to go ahead and start doing some painting after that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by painting the tires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip out most of the connections so there's only one connection to each of the tires. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint them. Of course, I gotta go ahead and do a little cleanup because we want these to be round. And in case you're wondering, I'm just using flat black. At this time, I really don't have to worry about detailing the rims. I just want to get the majority of the black down. Then I'll go back and then put some white on the rim since everything around the tire is gonna be white. Okay, now I just gotta let those dry. So yeah, for a model this size, there's not gonna be a lot of detailing involved. <laughs> there's only so much I can do. And the instructions say pretty much the whole bottom is white. I mean, there is some light gray that's gonna be done on top, but yeah, it's gonna be all white on the bottom. So that includes the missiles and every other little part that belongs down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this part out and attach it to the back. Okay, but yeah, you can see it just goes straight into that hole right there. I used to know what this thing was called, but yeah, this is a hook that drops when it lands on a battleship, so it is supposed to catch a line. Yeah, it's a very simple thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and glue that in. Okay, so I put a little piece of tape in between the hook and the actual airplane because I want it to not be laying flat against it because when I paint it, I don't want the paint to <laughs> make it look like it's one piece. I want it to actually be away from the aircraft. So, yeah, it's time to go ahead and start painting everything white. Oh, well, of course, after this tries. So I am going to clip out the missiles, of course. Not all the way. But I'm going to do the same thing I did with the tires. I'm going to clip everything away from the actual missiles, except for one more or one last attachment, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint them white. And yes, I will be using flat white. All right, so there's the missiles, 
And yeah, I know I could get better results if I used an airbrush, but eh, I don't have one of those yet, so I'm doing everything by actual brush. So we'll see exactly how well the body turns out when I use a brush on it instead of an airbrush. <sighs> it's gonna be interesting. All right, so I went ahead and did the first layer of white paint, and since I, yeah, I am using a brush, it's not going to be the prettiest result. You have to do this in layers, and you're going to have to be careful how you do it, because if you do it wrong, then you're going to see it just looking terrible as an end result. But yeah, I went ahead and I also did the tires. You can see they have white rims now, the missiles, as well as the front small little tires. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit, and then hit it with another layer of white paint. Okay, so we got three layers of paint down, and you can see that there's still some uh, areas that just need to be touched up. So we're going to do one more layer of white paint, and then we're going to go ahead and pop on the tires. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and cut out the missiles too. Okay, so... The last layer of white paint is dry. Let's glue all this stuff on. All right, all that's glued on. I'm just gonna go ahead and use some black paint. Touch up these tires. You can see where I cut it off. And I'm gonna flip it over and paint the inside of this black. All right. So next thing I need to go ahead and do is do all the gray that goes on top of this plane. <laughs> also, I have to blend it around the nose and just make it look really good. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing out. Of course, this is the windshield. Which, actually, this is the last part that I'm gonna be gluing onto this plane. But yes, as you can see, that's gonna go straight on there just like that. And I am gonna be painting the frame of the windshield, of course, light gray. Okay, so we got the first layer of paint and you can see, yep, I'm gonna have to build it up just like I did with the white paint. Mainly due to the fact that, well, this paint's just so thin. Also, for the glass, you can see that I went ahead and taped everything off and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the frame. Okay, so all the light gray is finally done with. Now I need to go ahead and do some extra details. I don't know why I didn't do this, but the top of these back fins are supposed to be white. This bottom part of the wings on each side is supposed to be white. The flaps on the back right here need to be white. I need to do some flat black that loops around the front. The tips of the wings and the fins are supposed to be orange. And then on here, you can see this is turning out okay. I have to do a couple more layers of paint. But once I get all that detailed, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on. And then I get to go ahead and start experimenting with some ink wash. Oh yeah, I also have to paint the exhaust for the engines. Okay, everything's together and it looks pretty good. So one thing, that I never did when I was younger was use an ink wash. And I wanna go ahead and start trying that, at least with this model, because you can see there are all these lines and what an ink wash will do, in theory, is get stuck in those lines and then give it contrast. Not to mention it'll look like the plane's been through, you know, wear and tear, so it'll look more realistic. Because as it looks now, it looks brand new. Like, it just, got made. <laughs> I want to go for that weathered look. So I'm going to try the ink wash, see how well it turns out. It's going to be a make or break moment. After that, we got to do some decals and then I can say I'm finally done with this model. All right, so I did the ink wash and you can see that it definitely dirtied the plane up quite a bit. It makes it look like it's been through hell, which is cool. I think it turned out way better than I thought it was going to. It's gonna take some experimenting because you're gonna have to work quick with it. With the stuff that I use, which is the game color wash, it dries pretty quick. So if you don't do it right, it will dry wrong. And then if you try to go back and fix it, it can mess up the whole wash. But I have to say for what it's worth, it turned out pretty good. So now I need to go ahead and start doing some decals. And guys, these aren't the 
peel them off and stick them on. These are cut them out, let them soak in water. Once it comes off or starts to come off the paper, then you gotta go ahead and slide it onto the model itself. But first I need to go ahead and let the ink wash dry a little bit more and then yeah, we'll be done. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with this one first. Go ahead and trim this out. Throw that in the water. All right, so you let it soak in the water until the decal can move around freely. Then just gotta line it up and slide it onto the model itself. Which you gotta be careful with. Okay. Now at this point, <laughs> gotta be careful because it can still slide around and there's water underneath it. So what I like to do is dab it very lightly. You don't want to just dab the whole thing, otherwise you can pull the decal off. Alright. Bam! And there you go. These decals are extremely fragile, so you have to be very careful how you do this. But, that's just a quick sample. Now I just gotta do all the other ones. Now, as I was doing the decals, I realized that they don't include the orange strap as a decal. So I have to mask it off and do some painting. And wow, that doesn't look good. I'm gonna have to touch that up with some black paint. But yeah, I have to paint on the orange stripes. All right, so the stripes have been painted. also touched up the tires. Let's do the rest of the decals. So there you have it. I am finally done with this thing. Now, I did do a lot of ink wash on this whole model, but I went ahead and went back and I lined it up with some paint just because it was a little bit too dingy for what I was going for. But I did leave a lot of it on the bottom, but I think this whole thing <laughs> turned out really good. I mean, considering it's a model that can fit in the palm of your hand, I think, yeah, I did a good job. So, like I mentioned before, this was a practice model. Now I need to go ahead and start doing bigger sizes because 144 scale is just, ugh, this thing has been a pain to work on. But, there you have it.